welcome to another Spider-Man class. Today, we're going to go along with a villain that isn't really well known in the Marvel Universe, but I thought I should at least mention him because, well, he's kind of cool. And it is Man-Wolf. So stick around, sit down, and let's review this bizarre character. Now, as we always do, we start off on a villain with a first appearance. So the first appearance of Man Wolf is Amazing Spider-Man 124, which is right here. Um, it's important to note that we already know in our last, in our Green Goblin review, that in Amazing 121 and 122 is the whole thing where Gwen Stacy dies and then Norman Osborn dies, the Green Goblin. In the next issues, and particularly this one and 125, the second appearance of Man Wolf, we see a lot of Peter Parker and Harry Osborn dealing with the death of their significant others. Spider-Man is dealing with the death of Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn is dealing with the death of the Green Goblin, his father Norman Osborn. Um, that's kind of like a side, side story that goes on between these two issues. Um, but let's get to Man-Wolf for this time around. What is Man-Wolf? Man-Wolf is actually J. Jonah Jameson's son. What happens is J. Jonah Jameson's son is an astronaut. He goes up into space and whatnot, does moonwalks and all that. Not the Michael Jackson moonwalks, but the lunar walks. And on his last lunar landing, he brought back a stone that he found. Now, this stone was a nice little piece of moon rock, but it was very bizarre. And he made it into a necklace, basically, and put it around his neck. And ever since then, every night, of the full moon, he would turn into basically a werewolf. Now this werewolf in the Marvel Universe is called Man-Wolf. Although cool, werewolves are always cool. I love werewolves. I find that the character of Man-Wolf doesn't work as well in the Spider-Man Universe, and I'll tell you why. Because if you, if we go about reading these two issues, although it's cool to see the Man-Wolf fighting with Spider-Man and whatnot, the problem is he doesn't talk. He growls a bit and that's it which makes all the dialogue fall on Spider-Man. Now, Spider-Man can have good dialogue, but it's hard to have good dialogue when you're talking to yourself. So, for that reason, Man-Wolf never really achieved a higher status of villainy. Because although the concept is cool of having a werewolf, the problem with the werewolf not speaking or anything like that, you know, it's kind of, uh... Well, he's cool to look at, but... You know, you can't you can't build a rapport with the guy. It's not like, you know, Venom was kind of monstrous too, but when he would he would talk and whatnot, you know what I mean? It would made it just made him cooler. So I think that's what Man Wolf lacked in order to be elevated from the mid status of uh, of Spider Man villains into the uh, main event status, if you will. But nonetheless, the storyline of being Spider Man one twenty four and one twenty five. In one twenty four what happens is we're first we first see J. Jonah Jameson meeting with his son, John Jameson, who is Man-Wolf. And John Jameson introduces J. Jonah to his fiance Christine, and all that wonderful stuff. And they go out for lunch and that. And later on, there's this creature that attacks J. Jonah in his apartment. And at the same time, Spider-Man is going to J. Jonah's apartment to basically talk with him. Because he's tired of seeing in a Daily Bugle every day... Gwen Stacy dead, uh, nor especially Norman Osborn dead, killed by Spider-Man. Because J. Jonah hates Spider-Man, we all know that, and he's basically blaming Spider-Man for the death of Norman Osborn, which nobody knows is the Green Goblin, because somehow, at the point of his death, all evidence was cleared, which we learn later on, Harry basically cleaned the mess. But we don't know that yet here. So what happens is Spider-Man goes to the apartment to confront J. Jonah, J. Jonah is already being confronted by Man-Wolf, which basically has J. Jonah's smell on him because he was out with him as his son, so he goes to the apartment building to hunt, if we will. So Spider-Man blocks in, whatever, gets into a fight with him. Spider-Man gets... J. Jonah realizes during the fight by seeing the necklace around his neck of Man-Wolf that it is actually his son. Then he tells Spider-Man basically to back off and whatnot, and Man-Wolf escapes. Spider-Man has no idea why... J. Jonah has taken Man-Wolf's side, but he probably, he just thinks, ah, oh, whatever, you know, there's my gratitude. 
when Man-Wolf leaves, Spider-Man leaves as well, and then at the end of this issue, we're left with Spider-Man on top of the building, pondering some stuff, and then Man-Wolf comes from behind to attack him, which leads into Amazing 125, which is another fight with Spider-Man and Man-Wolf on top of the rooftops into the streets. And again, Man-Wolf gets away, but Spider-Man gets a glimpse of the rock amulet he has around the neck. And he basically says to himself, I remember seeing that somewhere, I don't know where. And he's got this weird space-age suit on him, Man-Wolf does, because it's supposed to retract or push away the lunar light, lunar beams, to try to make him not turn into the wolf anymore. See, because the major issue of him turning into the wolf, it has to do with the stone. Now... As his father, J. Jonah, confronted him and said, well, why don't you just take the stone away, from, you know, take it from around your neck? He says the stone has basically grafted itself to its skin because of the radiation. So, well, which means he can't really take it off. Um, what happens later, at the end of all this, is that Man-Wolf goes to attack his girlfriend. Spider-Man interferes. Spider-Man grabs Man-Wolf, rips, rips off the collar off his neck as in wolf form. So when he re-comes back to human form, the wound is gone. Or so we're meant to think the wound is gone. So basically he turns back to normal and he's okay now. And Spider-Man just chucks the emulent into the river. And it sinks to the bottom and that's it. Um, so Man-Wolf was inspired by Werewolf by Night, if you will, from Marvel. Um, good to have a werewolf on the Spider-Man scene, not good to make him a big rogue villain because let's just face it, he doesn't talk, so there's not, without dialogue, villains really aren't that great. Um, if you want to pick these up, they're still worth a read if you want to, whatever you want to do it, you want to read them online, read them, uh, buy them, whatever you want, it's not a bad storyline, really reminds me of Werewolf by Night, but not as dark as Werewolf by Night because he. Basically, Man-Wolf doesn't really eat anybody. So, lacking that retrospect, too. One other cool thing about these two issues is that in the, as you know, in the back of the Spider-Man comics, you have the bullpen, which is actually people writing in and asking questions or giving comments. And when these came out, it was time for Amazing Spider-Man 121, The Death of Gwen Stacy, to be the topic of discussion in these. And there's a lot of negativity towards that issue, towards the death of Gwen Stacy. And it's kind of funny to read it all these years later, you know, to see what the fans had to say when it was fresh in their minds. So, yeah, so that's about it for this review. Um, like I said, I was told you last time I was going to do one of a subsidiary character. I didn't want a main villain, so I chose Man-Wolf. Next review, hopefully, we'll have a bigger bigger star in it if you will but keep subscribing to my videos keep posting comments um and that's about it so take care guys later